routine wreaks havoc on the body clock. And this affects everything from our sleep patterns to our energy levels to our uh, metabolism and our ability to focus and get things done and even our immune system. In this video, I'll be explaining why keeping the body clock in sync is so important and I'll be sharing three tips that you can use to regulate your circadian rhythm. I'm Dr. Nishi Bhopal. I am a physician specializing in psychiatry, sleep medicine, and integrative holistic medicine, and it has become my mission to empower you with the best tools for modern science and ancient wisdom to feel better, to sleep better, to function better, and to perform at your best. The pandemic has thrown our usual routines into disarray. The anchors that served as set points for our day, like commuting to work, um, whether we're driving or taking transit, getting to the office, commuting home, going to the gym, and whatnot, all of these things have been thrown out the window. Sheltering in place is our new normal for the time being, and it's really important that we establish good, regular routines. Human beings thrive on routines, and our body needs a regular routine. A routine is like the agenda for the day. It tells our body when to produce different hormones. Anyone who has a pet knows that they're on a strict clock. Your dog will tell you exactly when they need to eat, when they need to sleep, when they need to poop, and whatnot. This is because every living creature on this planet has a circadian rhythm. It has its own internal body clock. Everything from bacteria to algae to plants to every cell in your body to your pet to your microbiome. Uh, the microbiome is the gut flora, the bacteria in our gut that digest food and help with um, assimilating nutrients and whatnot. Even the gut microbiome is on its own body clock. The circadian rhythm dates back millions of years. The earliest life forms on earth had their own body clock. Circadian comes from the Latin word circa, which means approximately, and dia, which means day. So the circadian rhythm or the body clock is aligned to the 24 hour day cycle. So it's aligned to the light and dark cycle or the day and night cycle. The circadian rhythm has an impact on every system in the body from our sleep patterns to metabolism and weight to our immune system to how well we focus and how well we um, function and our energy levels and also mood. Ayurveda knew this thousands of years ago. The Ayurvedic understanding of routines and circadian physiology is so aligned with what we're starting to learn in modern science. We're learning that cortisol levels and liver function and thyroid function and all of these physiological processes in our body are on a clock. We're also learning that mood disorders like anxiety and depression, bipolar disorder, are also related to the circadian system. And so dysregulation in our circadian cycle can contribute to these mood disorders. There are certain sleep disorders that are also circadian in nature. For example, delayed sleep phase syndrome disorder is a uh, common disorder in young adults and adolescents and um, is characterized by difficulty falling asleep. Um, usually they don't fall asleep until the early morning hours, like 2, 3 a.m., um, sometimes later, and uh, they have trouble waking up in time for school or work so they could sleep until 11 a.m. or noon or sometimes even into the early afternoon hours. So this is something I see a lot of in my practice. There's also a phenomenon called social jet lag. Social jet lag is like jet lag without traveling. So this is what happens if we don't have the same routine every day. So if you're waking up at different times on the weekends versus work days, or you're eating your meals at different times every day, your body doesn't know when to produce all of these hormones, and it's not on a regular schedule. Uh, so it doesn't know when to release your thyroid train and your cortisol train and your adrenal train. So all these trains are firing at the wrong time. Uh, so this uh, is called social jet lag. So it's like going from San Francisco to New York every weekend uh, without actually traveling. So how do you know if your circadian system or your body clock is off? Well, there are a few clues. One is if you have irregular sleep patterns or if you don't feel sleepy around the same time every day. Another is that if you don't feel hungry um, at all or if you don't feel hungry at the same time every day, if your hunger tends to ebb and flow without any discernible rhythm, that's a sign that your body clock might be off balance. And then a third sign is simply feeling kind of foggy or crappy or under the weather. That's a sign that your body clock might actually be off. 
So how do you regulate your circadian rhythm and get your body clock back on track? Well, there are a few ways to do this. There are two main environmental cues that affect the body clock. One is light and the other is the timing of meals. So these environmental cues are called Zeitgebers, which is a German word that I'm probably mispronouncing. This word means time giver. So these are environmental cues that tell our body what time it is. So regulating when we get exposed to light and when we put food in our body will actually help to regulate the body clock. Tip number one, get up around the same time every day within about an hour of the same time each day and get bright light. So you can get bright light by going outside and getting natural light, that's ideal. Bonus points if you're going outside and exercising first thing in the morning or you know before noon, um, that's a really great way to regulate your body clock. If you're not able to get outside, then sitting by a window for about 30 minutes in the morning while you're doing something else, you can have your coffee or um, you know start work. Um, if you don't have a bright window to sit next to or if you don't have a patio where you can go outside, then you can consider using a light box. And I'll be doing a future video on light therapy and light boxes and how to use them. Tip number two is to eat your meals around the same time every day, again within about an hour of the same time each day. And I'm recommending about an hour of the same time every day because if you go beyond an hour, so if you're waking up or eating like two hours, um, with a two hour differential between different days, it's almost like this jet lag effect, that social jet lag that I had mentioned before. So you wanna try to keep your routines with a bit, within about an hour of the same time each day. So you wanna eat your meals around the same time every day. Bonus points if your largest meal is at lunch. So we're learning that the time that we eat, our calories, um, is important as well as what we're actually eating. Um, so studies are showing that we burn more calories midday, so early afternoon, uh, midday, early afternoon, or early evening is best for your largest meal. And in fact, Ayurveda knew this thousands of years ago. It's recommended in Ayurveda to eat your largest meal between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. when metabolism is at its highest. Tip number three is to turn your home into a cave at night. So what this means is to dim the lights after 8 p.m and create like an orange glow. So think like a dark cave with a candle, you get this nice warm orange glow. Um, this is something that I tell all of my patients. They're probably sick of hearing me talk about light and dark and the importance of circadian regulation, but this is so important. So if you have overhead lights, it's preferred if you can dim those, put them on a dimmer, or if you don't have a dimmer, use lamps or use a salt lamp or candles. Um, whatever you have to create that orange glow. And the reason this is so important is because bright light and blue light uh, suppresses melatonin production. So melatonin is the hormone produced by the brain to promote sleep and um, it's an important circadian body clock regulator. So you want to create this orange, warm, glowing atmosphere that's, that's dim um, and this will help promote sleep and signal to your brain that it's nighttime and time to go to bed and it'll help you get on a rhythm. Um, as far as devices, bonus points, if you stop using any devices at least an hour before bed, if you are using any devices in the evening, so your laptop, um, phone, tablet, what have you, uh, you can dim the screen brightness. You can use the night shift feature depending on what type of device you have, or you can even download certain apps that will filter out the blue light. Uh, there are also blue blocking glasses that you can wear in the evening to further block out any blue light exposure. If you're watching TV, TV isn't as interactive as some of the other devices, um, so you can simply dim the lights or dim the brightness on your TV screen. It's usually not as bad as some of the other devices because it's not as close to your face, it's usually a few feet away from the TV versus having something just a few inches from your face. So um, TV is not ideal, but it's not as bad as some of the other devices that you want to limit at least an hour before bed if you can. If you struggle with building in regular habits, what I would recommend is to pick one of these three tips. So either getting up around the same time every day within an hour and getting bright light in the morning, or eating your meals around the same time each day, plus or minus your largest meal midday, or dimming the lights um, and minimizing device use uh, after 8 p.m. So pick one of those if you have trouble building routines 
and then decide how often you want to do it. So you can decide that you might want to do this for 75% of the time or three days a week. It doesn't have to be every single day because then it can start to feel overwhelming if you're trying to build something new into your routine. So pick a few days a week, um, ideally three consecutive days. So for example, you could decide that next week you want to dim your lights after 8 p.m. Monday through Wednesday. If you get off track with building the routine, that is okay, that's normal, it's actually to be expected, and that's part of the process of building routines and building habits. So if you miss a day here and there, um, no problem. Just recommit to doing another you know, two or three days in a row and just keep on trying. Remember, it's all about progress over perfection.